Hey guys, today we are going to model this head implant step by step from start to finish. Let's go. Before we start, I want to inform you about my free beginner hard surface course for ZBrush. In this course, I will guide you through the ZBrush UI and introduce you to the main tools we are going to use. We'll start with a warm-up exercise to practice the necessary workflows and then we'll dive right into creating a VR headset step by step. So if you're just starting out or want to have a more detailed explanation of my workflows, this course is perfect for you. You can access the course through the link in the description. Alright, so let's first start out by painting out the main shapes for this head implant on the head. For that I'm going to use my masking pen and I'm just going to start paint in the borders of the shape that I want the head implant to be. And then I can do a auto region to fill in the rest of the shape. Press Ctrl W to give this a new polygroup. I'm just going to put this head out of this group so I can use it for booleans and all that stuff. Now I'm going to duplicate this head off. Grab this geometry, delete hidden. Let's fill that with a new color and do a polish by feature and a serial measure by 5K. And let's give this some dynamic thickness as well. Turn on subtractions and turn on booleans. Now I'm going to duplicate this part and choose my sliced curve. And I'm going to slice in a new shape that I can then use as a new inset. Something like this, give us another polish by groups and a C remesh with the same. And let's move this slightly in place. Awesome, I will also adjust this shape slightly. And now what I want to do is create a cutout for this piece right here. So I'm going to duplicate this. Choose this one, give this some more thickness. And apply to the thickness and then choosing my C modeler, hovering over the face, choosing extrude, polygroup all. Let's just extrude this ring outwards. And now I can turn on subtraction. And this new piece is now sitting perfectly inside of the main shape. So let's give this a bit more thickness as well. And adjust the offset slightly. Let's create the inset for the port. For that I'm going to switch to the boolean object. Switch to my IMM primitives brush. Choose the cylinder edges. Go to the middle here drag the cylinder up, inverse my mask and then do a split mask operation, put this down to the list and now I can move this inwards. Let's switch to the C modeler brush, switch to insert single edge loop and let's put in an edge loop. Right here I'm kind of looking to where the cutout is starting. And then I'm going to select this edge loop, give this a new poly group, and then extrude this outwards. I'm just going to put in another edge loop here to make this transition a little bit nicer here. Let's duplicate this. Grab this end cap right here. Delete hidden. Let's scale this down. grab that end cap, inverse the mask and let's scale it in, go to inset, polygroup all, go to extrude and, like, and let's extrude that outwards and let's switch this to subtraction as well and let's give the cylinder somewhat of a darker value, 
that switch to the sub tool and I'm going to switch to my IMM primitives brush again, choosing the cylinder on edges and let's put a small cylinder up here and bring this in. Bring out the gizmo, hold down control and make a copy. Let's turn off symmetry for now. If you turn on transparent mode while in live boolean, you can see your sub tool again. So I'm just going to position this right here and do a mirror and weld. Let's also do a inset right here. Before we do that, let's do a marker in history. Let's give this a new polygroup first. Now we can inset that. And extrude that artwork. And now I can do a apply to similar and that will make the change to the other cylinders as well, which are a copy of that one. Now we can start to detail. First, what I want to do with this piece is uh, create a nice bevel. And for that, I am going to use a bevel width function. So first I'm going to apply this thickness and with a clean edge loop like that, you can control click the bevel width and it gives you a really nice bevel. So now I just have to scale this in again so it fits nicely. And I can even control click on this in polygroup, just scale this in until I'm happy with the fall off and thickness of the bevel. By the way, you can find uh, the bevel width function under geometry and crease bevel width. Now that we have that, let's just give this some supporting edge loops. Switch to the C modeler brush, insert multiple edge loops, keep polygroups. Something like that. And let's put in two edge loops here as well. Now with all the click I can paint in some regions where I want some inserts and extrude those in to create some more interest in the cutout where this part sits in I'm going to switch to this boolean mesh switch into my simulator brush kind of find the width where I want to have another inset. So I'm going to put in an edge loop right here. I'm going to grab this poly strip right here. And now I'm just going to remove parts of the strip. Now I can give those a new polygroup, bring everything back and extrude those outwards. And now I'm just going to mask these portions, inverse, turn on local symmetry and scale them in. Everything here. Let's create some more insets on this piece so that I will duplicate that and hit apply to the thickness. I'm just going to grab this part and put some subdivisions on that so I have enough resolution for my masking. Now I'm going to alt drag on the surface and activate local symmetry with dynamic so that I then can paint in symmetry so that is a new functionality um, that came with Maxon so if you don't have that you can simply do that without dynamic symmetry and later do 
a mirror and weld with local symmetry that will give you the same result. Okay, let's turn off local. Make another one down here. Maybe this one's a little bit too big, so I'm going to switch back to local symmetry. And once we have that, I'm going to give this a new polygroup, mirror and world, delete lower subdivisions before that, and turn off local symmetry. Now we can grab those pieces, delete hidden, polish by feature, and let's see remesh that. Activate dynamic thickness, hit apply, and now I'm going to control click with the bevel width again and turning on subtraction. I'm just going to move them in slightly. Give this a different color. And then now what I would like to do is to rotate them in slightly. So I'm just going to isolate the masking on this part right here. So we get something like this. I can also grab the upper portion, turn on local symmetry, and scale that outward slightly. And then I can still come in with my move brush, kind of adjust it to the shape so it fits more nicely. So let's continue to further detail the inset for the plugin. For that I'm simply going to duplicate this piece, make sure that local symmetry with dynamic is turned on, switch to radial with a count of 16 and turn on the set symmetry. Now I can switch back to my C modeler brush, switch to my insert and single edge loop. And now I can press down alt and paint in these polys and get rid of the other poly groups. Delete hidden. When we turn off double, we see that we still have to flip our geometry. So let's turn on flip, turn on double again. And now I can extrude this piece inward and give them some thickness to the other side as well. Let's do a group by normals with an angle of 45. Go to serial measure, keep groups, turn smooth groups off and a target body group count of 5,000. And now let's do another group of normals with 80, crease poly groups, turn on dynamics, turn down thickness, split this to two or three, and put the crease level to something like two, maybe one. Now we get a really smooth mesh. And let's continue with setting up the subdivisions on the other subjects. So that I don't have to repeat the step to this one as well, I'm simply going to click in the history again and hit apply similar, turn on dynamic, turn on thickness. Let's do this one, crease polygroups, turn on dynamic. And same thing for this part. Here I can simply increase the segments and turn on subdivision. And there we have it, our really cool head implant. So if you want more insights of my workflows or want to get a better understanding of ZBrush, look at my free beginner hard surface course, which I designed to be easy to follow as a beginner. You can find the link in the description. Until then guys, take care.